Christian Lindholm invented the NaviKey user interface and life blog multimedia diary during his time at Nokia. He then moved on to Yahoo, where he was responsible for global mobile product creation. And these days, he's a managing partner at digital design company Fjord, where he continues to work with Nokia on future strategy. Pleased to say he joins me now via webcam from Helsinki. Christian, good to see you. Thank you so much for speaking to us. So, you know, as we were hearing that, Thanks it's, a lot. yeah, as we were hearing that, you know, Nokia being squeezed on both sides, not just in developed markets, but also facing increasing competition from local suppliers in emerging emerging markets and yet you're optimistic about the future of the company why is that yes so I, I actually uh, been comparing this situation to uh, two previous similar incidents one with with Motorola and and, and before that with with Ericsson where they didn't <coughs> manage to do, do these uh, operating system transformations and, and they're massively big projects they are are easily investment north of half a billion and, uh, and they take hundreds of, of people and they take a long time to do. Uh, and, and now Nokia has, has failed in, in that transition. Yeah, because but what, what they have is, is three assets that, uh, that I do think is, is valuable, uh, which, which will help them come out of it. One is, is they have a very big effort in maps. And, and we at Fjord have been involved helping them work and, and, and design in that space. And that's something I'm very bullish about. Uh, the second asset is that the low-end uh, software platform Series 40 has been a, a dormant cash cow. It's a very mature platform. And uh, I think that that's uh, ripe for, for innovation. And, uh, and they've already shown that they can do rapid innovation with their low-end touch and type X3 product. Uh, uh, and the third one is simply this partnership with Microsoft. Yeah, I mean, uh, why? Because obviously, you know, Nokia very much relying now on Microsoft Windows 7 operating system to keep up with Apple's iPhone, Google's Android. And that seems to be the key. It's its operating system. It's where it's really lagging behind its competitors right now. So why will, why will this operator, why will Windows 7 succeed where Symbian handsets have failed? So... The reason why, why Symbian uh, failed was that when you design an operating system, you design it for uh, a specific uh, type of usage, you design it for uh, ways of using it, and, and Symbian was, was initially designed for, for uh, click and scroll uh, pen usage, and, and it couldn't be morphed to this direct uh, manipulation uh, finger usage. So that was one uh, element where, where in, in, um, in its development it then got somehow schizophrenic and fragmented and, and, and the quality was just not there. Yeah, I mean, can, can I ask you, I mean, wouldn't it have made more sense to offer all sorts of phones, including ones with, say, Google's Android system, given that it, it's, it's you know, the fastest growing on the sort of smartphone, the smartphone platform? Uh, I, I don't think that would make any sense for them because it's not really differentiated what, from what they were developing themselves. And, and what Windows Phone offers and, and what makes me excited about that is that it is really the first context era operating system and, and user interface. And, and context is the next paradigm. Uh, so when we have done uh, dozens of, of touch UI concepts and, and I brief my designers that now we need to do one, they typically come up with a context-based UI, which means that it's uh, one which adapts to time, place, uh, to the social network uh, and your habits. And that is inherently different from these menu-type uh, yeah. user interfaces of which Android and iOS are the latest incarnations. But that paradigm started 15 uh, years uh, ago when, when, uh, when the, the you know, Nokia click and scroll UIs were designed.